Good morning, this is Richard Lowry with Syndicated News. I had the honor uh, last Friday night of speaking with uh, Marines from Charlie Company, 1st Battalion, 2nd Marines, who all fought in the Battle of Nazaria. They had assembled here in Washington, D.C. for the 10-year anniversary of the first major battle of Operation Iraqi Freedom. To this day, throughout the entire war, the battle, March 23rd, 2003, was the bloodiest day of combat for American forces for the entire war. 29 Americans lost their lives in Nazaria on March 23rd, 2003. And I was asked to speak at the memorial dinner of, for Charlie Company, and I'd like to read to you all uh, the speech that I gave. Good evening, Pale Horse Marines friends and family. It is an honor to be here with you all tonight. It is hard to believe that tomorrow will mark the 10th anniversary of your fight for a dusty road, a small bridge, and a barren plot of land on the other side of the world. I spent quite a long time thinking about what I wanted to say to you here tonight. Let me start by saying thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication to your country and each other. And thank you for your sacrifices. I also wanted to try to provide you with an historical perspective. So I searched for a story that might help you connect your experiences with others from the past. There is a small plaque tucked away in a quiet corner of Arlington National Cemetery, dedicated to America's first soldiers. The small bronze plaque lists eight men, John Brown, Samuel Hadley, Caleb Harrington, Jonathan Harrington, Robert Munro, Isaac Musey, Jonas Parker, and Ashal Porter. They were the first Americans to die in defense of our nation. These men gathered with their friends and neighbors to stand on the Lexington Green in the chill of a New England spring morning to defend their homes and families from an increasingly more tyrannical British occupation. Warned earlier by Paul Revere and Sam Adams, the militia assembled on April 19, 1775 at Lexington Commons to stand and say, no more to British rule. No one knows who fired the first shot, but one of the American militia fell to the shot heard round the world. Then eight brave men were killed in the chaos that followed. These fathers, sons, and brothers should be forever remembered as the patriots who were first to stand on the front line, defending the American dream. They changed the course of history, yet their plaque is hidden away near the old chapel, never visited by tourists, never mentioned on the cemetery tour, and nearly forgotten by history. You may not think of it, but you all have an unspoken bond with the Lexington Minutemen. You all came together to fight for your families, friends, neighbors, and nation. The Lexington Eight started a revolution that changed the world forever. Scholars have yet to understand Charlie Company's contribution to history. But what is really important is that each of you voluntarily committed to protect the safety and security of the American people. I am certain that if John Brown, Samuel Hadley, Caleb Harrington, Jonathan Harrington, Robert Munro, Isaac Musi, Jonas Parker, and Ashel Porter were here this evening, they would all say thank you. And I am just one of many Americans that will be eternally grateful for your selfless commitment to our nation. I know that we are all here this weekend to remember our friends and your fellow Marines who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their nation. I know that Michael Bitts, Thomas Blair, Brian Busing, Tamario Burkett, Kemafum Chanawangse, Donald Klein, David Fribley, Jose Garibay, Jonathan Gifford, Nolan Hutchings, Jorge Gonzalez, Philip Jordan, 
Patrick Nixon, Frederick Perconi, Brandon Reese, Randall Rosecker, Thomas Slocum, and Michael Williams are here with us tonight, and I know that they will remain with us forever. I am an historian, and I know that there was good that came out of that terrible day. I know that your fellow Marines did not die in vain, and that each of you can be proud of your participation in the battle for Nazaria. David Nixon, Patrick's dad, knows the story of the Marsh Arabs. I want everyone here tonight to know their story too. After the first Gulf War in 1991, President Herbert Walker Bush encouraged the Iraqi people to revolt against Saddam Hussein's rule. Many in Southern Iraq, including the Marsh Arabs, rose up against Saddam and their uprising was brutally crushed. The Marsh Arabs had lived in harmony with the land for centuries, cultivating the marshes, nurturing their fragile ecosystem, and passing down to each generation a respect for an environment that was quite possibly the cradle of human civilization. When Saddam brutally crushed the 1991 revolt, he murdered hundreds, no, thousands of Iraqis in the South. But that was the least of his brutality. To punish the Marsh Arabs, Saddam started a massive engineering project to divert the life-giving waters away from the marshes. The Saddam Canal was part of that project. It channeled waters away from the southern marshes, destroying them and taking away the source of its inhabitants' livelihood. On March 23rd, when you rolled across the Saddam Canal Bridge, the marshes were nearly dead. Your actions rid the Marsh Arabs of Saddam and the suffering he imposed. The locals almost immediately began breaching the man-made canals to bring life back to their homes and land. Today, the Marsh and its inhabitants are thriving again, and it is directly because of you and your actions on that terrible day. I know that there has been much written about the absence or presence of the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq prior to 2003. I have never participated in that debate, but I know that your commanders believe that Saddam had those weapons. History will decide, but I want you all to know about something that I discovered while researching the war. Al-Qaeda was in Iraq before the invasion. Abu Musab al-Zargawi, one of Osama bin Laden's chief lieutenants, fought in Afghanistan until he was wounded in 2002. He managed to escape and ended up in a hospital in Baghdad, where he was nursed back to health. Tarnak Farms, al-Qaeda's training camp and sanctuary in Afghanistan, had recently been captured by U.S. Marines, and bin Laden needed a new refuge. So after Zargawi recovered from his wounds, it is believed that bin Laden sent him to northern Iraq to search out a new home for terrorism. Zargawi and Ansar al-Islam, the Iraqi arm of al-Qaeda, established a foothold high in the Iraqi mountains near Halabja and built the largest terrorist training camp in the world. The camp was up and running before the American invasion and five days after your fight for that northern bridge, American special forces, along with Kurdish Peshmerga fighters, fought a bloody three-day uphill battle to take the training camp in an operation called Viking Hammer. 300 non-Iraqi fighters were killed, and the rest, including Zargawi, slipped away into Iran. I truly believe that you chased al-Qaeda into Iraq and that it took the Marines years to defeat them. So again, you can all be proud of your participation in the global war on terror. You fought the good fight. You freed the Marsh Arabs, pursued Al Qaeda terrorists, deposed one of the most ruthless tyrants history has ever produced, freed the Iraqi people to allow them to chart their own course and help defend our nation. And against all odds, you achieved your objective on March 23rd, 2003. Everything went wrong that day, yet you pressed on and won. And in so doing, you emblazoned your names in the heritage of the United States Marine Corps. General Douglas MacArthur once said, 
Old soldiers never die, they just fade away. Michael Bitts, Thomas Blair, Brian Busing, Tamario Burkett, Kemafung Chanawanse, Donald Klein, David Fribley, Jose Garibay, Jonathan Gifford, Nolan Hutchings, Jorge Gonzalez, Philip Jordan, Patrick Nixon, Frederick Percorni, Brandon Reese, Randall Rosecker, Thomas Slocum, and Michael Williams will never fade away as long as they remain in our hearts and minds. I, for one, will always remain faithful in telling their story for as long as I may live. God bless you all, and may God continue to bless America. This is Richard S. Lowry, military historian, speaking for syndicatednews.net.